so when we talk about the zones of the retroperitoneum what are the zones that we have and this is named by a concept of fullens zone so we have something which is known as fullens zone and what are these zones let us understand in the center we have the great vessels so this zone is the central zone then we have the flanks which is forming the lateral zones so we also have the pelvis forming the zone 3 so this is how we if we see the diagram this is something like this so here we are having the flanks here we are having the flanks and in the middle we have the zone 1 so let us name them this is zone 1 this is zone 2 and this is zone 3 what is the significance of the central zone central zone contains your all the you can say great vessels so this is aorta this is ivc they are all present in the great vessels are present in the central zone then when we talk about the flanks that is the zone 2 and the pelvis zone 3 what do they contain now this is again very important central zone this extends up to the medial border of kidney and ureter so up to the medial border of kidney and ureter this is what is very 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 important why let me tell you because you have a different you can say plan of action for the central injuries versus flank injuries so when we talk about the flank it includes the kidneys and the abdominal part of the ureter this is what is very 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 important and what is the content of the pelvis answer is the pelvic part of the ureter and along with that the bladder so this is zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 concept do you know there was a question asked in INI set about the zone 4. So usually no book mentions about zone 4 but there, there are certain articles about zone 4. Now what is zone 4 students? Zone 4 is retrohepatic IVC. So yes there is a controversy that nothing is there like zone 3 is zone 4 but yes some people they might consider or they consider zone 4 as retrohepatic IVC and this is what is zone 4 anyways let us have a nutshell how we approach these patients so on one side we shall write the zones so zone when we talk about we have zone 1 we have zone 2 we have zone 3 so zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 on one side let us write the mode of injury so we have penetrating trauma so we have penetrating injury and we have what students we have blunt injury so what is the difference between how we approach for blunt versus penetrating let us see in this diagram only so when we have a penetrating injury to zone 1 so remember it's a question of your great vessels so always and always you have to go for surgery whenever we talk about the penetrating injury to zone 2 again the flanks contain the kidney and the abdominal part of the ureter again you'll have to go for surgery same way the bladder and the, the pelvic part of the ureter again we have to go for surgery so the moral of story is any sort of penetrating injury, any penetrating injury to the retroperitoneum will always, always, always have to take a call for surgery. This is what is very, very, very important. When we talk about the blunt trauma to the abdomen and blunt, blunt trauma to the retroperitoneal, so blunt retroperitoneal injury, zone 1, remember students, it is a question of your great vessels, a negative surgery, a negative laparotomy is always justified rather than a regret of or rewards of losing a patient so remember surgery so again a moral of story is any injury to zone 1 be it penetrating be it blunt yes it has to be managed with what students it has to be managed with surgery 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 this is important when we talk about the zone 2 it is observation and for the certain category patient unstable or high grade grade 4 and 5 renal traumas we have to go for what the surgery also Remember, when we talk about the zone 3 blunt traumas, we manage them, majority of them, by observation only. Now, what is the logic behind observation for zone 2 and zone 3? Now, this is what is very, very, very important. Uh, let us try to understand the abdominal cavity. Abdominal cavity is made up of two cavities, two chambers, the peritoneal cavity and the retroperitoneal cavity. Unlike the peritoneal cavity, the abdominal that is a retroperitoneal cavity is not very big and therefore it is having a small volume so suppose this is the organ which has been injured suppose this is the organ which has been injured and because of this injury there will be bleeding and a time will come when this entire retroperitoneum will be what full of what blood and now there is no further scope of bleeding why because this is a closed chamber 
and this chamber is now full. Now what will happen any further bleed will increase the pressure of this cavity and when the pressure is increased inside a closed cavity remember the Pascal's law the pressure inside the closed cavity is exerted equally at all the sides. So this pressure itself is applied on this bleeding organ this is just like a tamponade and who is applying this tamponade students this is a retroperitoneal tamponade effect and this is what is very important so just like when you are bleeding you put a tamponade with your finger with your hand same way here no hand is coming but the pressure inside the retroperitoneal cavity is causing a tamponade effect and that is why the majority of the blunt traumas of the retroperitoneum except the you can say the zone one they can be managed retroperitoneally uh, they can be managed conservatively and this is what is making retroperitoneal injuries really very important i hope you understood this concept of the retroperitoneal